the one five ninth aspect of nakshatras are important to consider and we'll tell the rules of why it is so you'll find out in a minute check your ascendant number one ascendant angle the cusp of your ascendant whatever planet is close to the ascendant especially if it is rahu ketu or jupiter are close to that cusp close to your ascendant angle that's the first rule number two if rahu or jupiter are your atma karaka we shall speak about this much later on number three if rahu and ketu are in one seven axis the first and the seventh axis Number four, if other planets are in conjunction with Rahu, Ketu or Jupiter in specific nakshatras, the focus being on specific nakshatras. And we'll deal with all the nine types of nakshatras here, really. Number five and the most important, if you have an exchange of lordship between the lords of nakshatras and or the dominance of one ruler of nakshatras in your chart for example if you have mercury and moon exchanging lords okay and then you have mercury dominated nakshatras this will be important and if jupiter is in that particular nakshatra of mercury you see what i'm saying so you got to check which the ruler of the nakshatra is we have nine types basically nine classifications of three nakshatras each which makes it 27 so let's get into it so if you're looking at the chart you see rahu is fifth and ninth aspects this is the fifth aspect of rahu we are taking first and seven axis as an example this is a blank chart any chart okay so rahu if it sits here fifth aspect is looking at the fifth house and ninth aspect is looking at the ninth house from the first so this is being one this being fifth this being ninth in a similar way if you see ketu on the other side because it's diagonally opposite it will sit on the other side its fifth aspect is the 11th house from the 7th house and its ninth aspect is the third house this is how ketu will behave if you take jupiter and jupiter if it's sitting in the 10th house for example its fifth aspect is the second house and ninth aspect is the sixth house so this being the one this being the five and this being the nine this is very important to consider why do we say so because now if you see 90 percent of your chart whoever your chart is wherever rahu ketu and jupiter are placed just these three points have a dominant influence on the rest of the chart apart from these blanked out ones which you see in the original color. Rahu has impact on these brown houses. Ketu has impact on these light brown houses. Jupiter on these yellow houses in our example. This is the singular reason why it's very, very crucial for you to understand these videos. Okay. And I will get into one by one, one of the nakshatras after this introduction. But before that, we shall consider for the purposes of this study, Rahu is the point of focus and drive where you want to go in this lifetime. Ketu as past life conquered territory or your karma which you have already learnt and knowledge and finished. Ketu brings all the past life into this life. So whatever you learnt experience and knowledge, whatever you are already an expert in is Ketu. Jupiter as the point of wisdom where you need to take assistance off okay consider it like that in this particular aspect now let's get into the nakshatras let's talk about the one finite code of mars nakshatras now there are three of them Rikshira, chitra and dhanishta in this white triangle that has moved across the pie chart now okay so there you see Rikshira, there you see chitra and there you see dhanishta that's the apex of the triangle. If Jupiter, Ketu or Rahu are sitting on this axis, they are looking at these three nakshatras and if there is exchange of lordship and other rules that I spoke of. Yes. So first of all, before we understand Mars rule nakshatra, we got to understand what Mars is. Think of the first house, think of Aries, think of initiator, think of ego. Mars have a dominant um, energy of ego issues in them from past lives this is the energy of these nakshatras lots of ego issues which they have come this lifetime to solve so what happens in this first pada 
as you can see goes into the Leo Navamsha. Second Pada goes into the Virgo Navamsha. Third Pada goes into the Libra Navamsha, which is most exalted in Chitra, going from Libra to Libra. And the last Pada goes into Scorpio. So before we get into this, Mars has got everything to do with, Mars nakshatras have to do with a lot of ego issues, a lot of working for self, a lot of concern about only I, me, myself, and what have I got achieved in the last lifetime, okay? Something like that. They have those kinds of issues going on in their life. Everything to do with how can I show off, showing off their positions in terms of everything, Mars, home, land, their body, their victories. These are the kind of thoughts that go through Mars nakshatras. So the karma to be solved here is work selflessly, something like Lord Hanuman, for example, working selflessly. He was an example of working selflessly, isn't it? So that's the core reason of Mars nakshatras. Now it goes between, as you can see, Taurus and Gemini, it goes from Earth to Air signs in every case. Virgo to Libra and goes from Capricorn to Aquarius. So going from Earth to Air signs, in the first two Padas it goes in Earth sign, then going into Air sign. There is no exaltation really. But let's see the core characteristics of this Nakshatras, all these three of them. So like I discussed earlier, what are the general characteristics of Mars Nakshatras? Number one, problem due to violence, sudden actions, not listening to anyone else and emotional traumas. The typical characteristics of Mars, you bring it to these three. Number two, karma, selfish reasons to work in past lives. In the past life, they have worked very selfishly for themselves and their egotistical glorification only. In this lifetime, they come to solve it by working selflessly for others, to work in a team and not just for your own egotistical gratification. This is the challenge, this is the karma of Mars Nakshatras, Brakshira, Chitra and Dhanishta. So correction in this life to work selflessly, work, learn to work in teams, that will be their theme, not to work alone for self-glorification. Number three, they love to show off their positions in terms of home, in terms of land, in terms of body and in terms of victory. You see all the Mars themes here. All these things are related to Mars, the home, the land, the body, your physical body how good looking I am, or how many victories I've had, all ego issues. They have come to solve this. If you have Jupiter, Rahu or Ketu in these apexes of the triangle, it's worthwhile noting that these challenges is something you need to work through. By doing what exactly? By working selflessly. You worked very selfishly in the past. Time to change that, isn't it? Mars will make you do that. Okay, you need to learn this from Rahu, Ketu or Jupiter if it is sitting in this. Or if there is an exchange of Lordship with Mars Nakshatras. Okay, now let's wrap this up with the triangle itself and how we can get a code there. So to conclude, there is the Mars triangle. Okay, Mrikshira, Chitra and Dhanishta. Mrikshira, let's go through the quickly some themes there. Then only we'll understand this. They are flexible, joyous, gentle, sadevana. Desires that go against the norm. They are about chasing relationships. Although there is no exalted form of the Pada itself, I would think Mars related nakshatras have a dominant theme of Libra in the Navamsha. Gemini going to now Libra. Libra going into Libra and Chitra. And Aquarius going into Libra because this is the selfless service they need to bring. Libra is about others. Just my guess. A forest and nature is always coming to Mars Nakshatras because it's all about land, the connection to the land. Relationship issues, yes. Spirituality, if it's in the ninth house, 
profession if it's in the 10th house, partners if it's in the 7th house. Knowledge going into the 5th. That is Leo. Taurus to Leo is more about children, education, etc. Taurus to Virgo is about work. Both are grounded earth signs. Gemini to Libra is very airy. Okay. <clears throat> Desirous of more relationship issues. Gemini to Scorpio is transformational. Going overboard, suspicious nature. Okay, so the life lesson is finding core commitment which resonates deeply to work with. And considering what we just discussed about Mars being selfless service, being the theme of Mars nakshatras, that core commitment of Mrikshirsha should be to work with others in a team. Coming to Chitra, half between Virgo, half into Libra, opportunity, creation of physical beauty. Now Mars can get obsessed with themselves, so Chitra people can get self-obsessed about their physical beauty. Just what we spoke of. Remember Mars here. Success-driven, action-oriented. The challenge is to overcome negativity. They are attractive physically, they have an active social life. They have a mixed attitude of spirituality and materialism. Lots of sexual energy in Chitra, especially going from Libra to Libra, it's highly sexual. And even Libra going into Scorpio. Where is the life lesson here? Sensual brilliance needs truth as he is to shine. In Chitra, it becomes about 6th and 7th house, which means it becomes dominantly about partnership relating to Mars issues, if you might say that. Okay? That's what Chitra will face here with regard to Mars. Your sensual brilliance needs to be about taking care of others. Libra, highest exaltation. <clears throat> In Danishta, Capricorn to Aquarius. What, the, what happens here? It's Capricorn and Aquarius is about work and rewards. So fame and wealth themes, yes, because it's Aquarius mainly. Connecting to music, dance, sports, etc. Very creative because Capricorn goes to Leo, in Navamsha to Virgo, and Libra and Scorpio. They have many facets to their personality, multi-dimensional personality people. Because of Aquarius presence, they are more like. Great communicators, they can be excellent communicators. Yeah. Life lesson finally, find the right kind of resources to make true wealth. Their resources may be related to beauty, wealth and material, even land, even their physical body, Dhanishta. Physical body is more like Chitra in relationships because it's going into Libra. Here it may be concerning more to do with gains, finding the wealth, that's why Dhanishta, because it's Aquarius. So pay attention to the last two padas in terms of Mars Nakshatras, Gemini in Murkshisha, Libra in Chitra and Aquarius in Dhanishta. Think more along those lines. Okay. So next we shall be doing the Rahu Nakshatras, the unconventional one. That will be more important considering this is 159, isn't it? So check where the planets are, if there is exchange of lordship in your mass nakshatras, work selflessly. Not about your ego issues folks. Take care, be safe.